What's up, college football fans and Mean Green fans? Tanoi Valenta here once again with the Mean Green Show. Today, joined again by Ryan Davenport. We're going to recap this North Texas Memphis game. But before we get into all that, guys, you already know the drill. If you're a fan of college football or G5 football, consider hitting that like and subscribe button because that's truly all that we talk about. Ryan, appreciate it. Once again, again, we were just talking pre tape. It just seems like we're singing the same song um, for the last couple of weeks. Just, just these close losses. I know, speaking from my personal experience when it was 31 seven at the half, I was up, you know, sitting in the press box, it kind of had a, a bit of a feeling a little bit, a little bit of a tug. It just, you know, it's, it's hard to get to these games. I mean, it is, you know, we have a family and, you know, kids sports and there's a lot of logistics to make these games. And man, it was 31 seven at the half. A part of me is like, man, screw it. I should, should go home and you know, whatever, just, I, I don't know. I don't even need to go to the presser. Just, I just can't watch this, but obviously, Stayed for the entirety of the game, and huh, you got to give it to them. I mean, thirty-one to seven, they come back, take the lead late in the fourth quarter, and you know just fall short. Hennigan, the son of the pride of Ryan, didn't Ryan? You know, goes down and um, just just finishes the game off on like a fifty-second, forty-second drive. I just did the UTSA podcast before hopping on with you, and, and the guys were saying now he has his own drive, um, which I guess in theory he does, but. You know, a bit, bit of, bit of a heartbreaker. Uh, Memphis is a good team, a good American team, and you know, we'll, we'll jump into the weeds of things, you know, here in, in a bit. But Ryan, what are what are your initial initial thoughts on uh, on Saturday's game? I mean, slow start, very slow start, getting going, and uh, again, can't stop anybody uh, defensively. Uh, I want. You know, I want to be excited to be at those games, and and that fourth quarter was exciting. Um, when he scored um, with 40 seconds left to take the lead, um, we were, you know, we were excited. We weren't in the game at all up until that point, but then the game was exciting. Um, but they but they left too much time on the clock. I, I don't think I don't think I really had any confidence that we were going to pull it out. I was hopeful we would. You know, I felt good. I was like, well, my my pick this week looks pretty good uh, with 40 seconds left. But um, yeah, we were we left too much time, and and we can't we can't shut anybody down. Um, I do have a couple of you know defensive uh, statistics to talk to talk about a little bit. You know, defensively we're we're last in yards per game. We're giving up more yards per game than anybody else. Total yards. Total yards. And then we're in the bottom six on the points we're giving up per game. So, you know, that's not a that's not a recipe for success. Conversely, we have some guys, Macklin leading in TDs in the country, um, receiving TDs. Rogers is in the top 20 in quarterback yards and tenths. Uh, tenth in passing TDs, so it's kind of a tale of two sides of the ball. We've got a offensive team, and we have zero defense at the moment. Do you think? I mean, being that you know Morris is is uh, is a branch off of the of the leech tree. This is just what what this the, you know what this breeds as far as just high performing offenses and. And defenses that 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 leaves, you know, a lot to be desired. I mean, just you just see that with, with I mean, the USC's of the world. I mean, just just it just seems like a lot of these air raid offenses, for whatever reason, their defenses, you know, they're just they're just not they're not there. And and, and I I don't know what the common denominator is, but do you have any thoughts on, on that statement at all? Yeah, unfortunately, I think that is the case. I think that. Uh, Morris is a leech disciple. You're going to see what you would see at, at Tech or then Washington State and Mississippi State is a lot of offense and no defense. And I, I don't know if they don't uh, hire coordinators or give them enough autonomy. I don't know if they spend a lot of time on the offensive side of the ball and not enough time on the defensive side. I really don't know what the uh, contributing factor to that is, um, but I think I think we're – bound to see more of it. I think, I think we will get better on defense, but I don't think we're going to be, I don't think it's going to be a focus of the team. It's not going to be part of the 
North Texas program that wins those games, if that makes sense. Yeah, but I mean, you know, 42 points, you put up 42 points, that should that should win you a football game in, you know, in, in most worlds. But, you know, I think, I, I again, we've all been hard on Capone, you know, especially me. So I, I, I don't have any insider information. I just, I don't think there's going to be any move at DC. And, and I'm, I'm not saying I don't think that's the right, you know, thought or, or moving itself, you know, to, to keep Capone there for continuity. And maybe, you know, there's a, a significant jump up, but do you, I mean, again, we're just regurgitating the, the, the past podcast at, at this point, but I, do you have faith that this, that this team can, can keep a UTSA under 35 points? No. So you think it's going to be another UTSA scores 42? Probably. It seems seems logical for in the 40s and we score in the 40s but lose. I mean that's just that's just been I have seen it too many times. I mean we're really close. Uh, you know, losing three games by less than a touchdown, you're like, "Oh, we're right there." And yeah, if we go from being dead last in defense to, you know, bottom third, we would probably win some games, but but we've got to do something. I mean, we're just – we're really bad. As good as we are on de- on offense right now, we are that bad on on defense. The offense yeah. is, is great and the defense is terrible. Do you th- – I mean, what are your thoughts? So, I mean, like that, that – do you think Capone will be back next year, if you had to guess? I, I don't know because, to me, it's not scheme. It's not a it, – you watch the kids just miss tackles just get run through and miss tackles and that's fundamentals. That's, that's basic stuff. Maybe they're not spending any time on it. I don't know. Maybe they didn't spend any time on it in camp, but uh, you know, it's a combination of poor tackling and being in the, in bad positions. And I don't, maybe you keep Camboni around for another year, but I feel like you got to bring in more, maybe it's different position coaches maybe you got to shake things up we went through this with coach dodge coach dodge brought a defensive coordinator in uh who was frankly uh outmatched uh at the uh college football level he was a high school coordinator i think and um i remember we went to oklahoma first game of the season and they put 72 on us i believe that game and I was playing defense, and I think we ran a base defense the whole time. We didn't change. We didn't stunt. We didn't do anything. And it was embarrassing. And I think Stoops said that in the presser after the game that it's pretty easy when they don't change anything. And we just – we did nothing. And and that was called from the sidelines. They called nothing the whole game. And after that season, he was fired, and they brought in the Loach, who had been here before and came back, and he was at UCLA before he came in. And our defense got a lot better. I mean, instantly got better. Um, and the Loach was a good coach to play for. And we were, you know, we weren't, it took us a little bit. We weren't like top 10 defense or anything like that, but we were a lot better than the last place we were in uh, before that. So you got to shake something up. And I'm not, you know, I, I've i tried to be very, you know, Let's give it time with with Capone and but I mean we got to win some games here. We can't be this close and then just give people forty seconds and they march down the field and put in the end zone. So I don't, I don't know. Do you do you feel like hmm, do you have a score prediction for the UTSA game? I know you just kind of alluded to a forty to forty with with North Texas having a close loss, but do you feel pretty? If you, if you had to put your money on, I think UTSA is an eight-point favorite. Do you think it's going to be a, a U, another North Texas covers but but loses ultimately? I think it'll be 42 to 35 probably. 42 to 35. Yeah. Um, and then that if that was the if that happens, then they would have to win out to be bowl eligible, which that winning out includes SMU. Yeah, so, we're not – and I don't think we're – I don't think there's any way we're beating SMU. Yeah. Just because I think with, with Memphis – and even to some degree with UTSA, definitely with Navy and some of these other teams, we came in and we had a chance. And, you know, Memphis is a hard comp- uh, opponent, but they let us hang around and, and get back in at the end of the game. 
SMU always gets up to play North Texas. They always they if they have an opportunity to put 70 points on us, they will. And they don't like another school from the Metroplex trying to be in their same conference, trying to be at the same level as them. They hate it. So to them, they're going to be up for that. And I think that they uh, put a bunch of points on us. Um, you know, maybe there's some opportunities to win some games at the end of the year, but I think it's going to be tough. Uh, if you, I don't think you're going to be able to take down SMU. So, yeah. So this is real. This is really it. I mean, you know, if, if Morris, you you know, was to pull off the upset against SMU. Or I'm sorry, against UTSA, not SMU. I'm with you. I think SMU is just forget it. But as far as UTSA goes. Do you think, I mean, I mean, it's a short tenure, so it's not really saying a lot, but it's probably definitely would be his biggest win, definitely, as a, as a North Texas coach. Um, kind of kind of going over the offensive side of the ball, you know, Rodgers passes for over 400 yards, five touchdowns. Iowa Day rushes for over 100. Oscar Attaway rushes for 87. So Coach Cobbs' room is still reigning strong, even with Isaiah Johnson being out, uh, mm-hmm. you know, for the um, really probably the length of the rest of the season. There, there's a... Another guy, Quaylon Farrar. I'm not sure how much he'll get used. Uh, he's a real speed guy out of South Oak Cliff, but there's a lot that goes in, into playing running back. You know, pass protection. Right. You know, just knowing different types of keys. You know, it's more than just taking a handoff and flying right. down the field. So, I don't know how much they're going to utilize uh, another back outside of IO and, and Oscar. It might just be they get the lion's share from from here on out, uh, assuming they can both stay healthy. So we'll see how that goes. Continuing to go to land sides, um, he only had three yards for twenty, actually three receptions for twenty six yards. But again, they're, they're working the young, the young freshman there. Uh, Roger Burns went over the two thousand mark, yep. top top ten, had a really monster game, three three touchdowns. Macklin, you know, two touchdowns, forty five yards. Yep. Yeah, Macklin's doing doing his thing. So, yeah, I you know, I just I don't know. It's I mean, just, they're so you know, close. Congratulations to Burns over two thousand yards, and he had a he had a great game. He really did. And Maglin looked good too. The, the offense looks good. They they really do. I think they're taking a long time to get started. Um, you know, being close, that game was felt like it was out of reach in the first half. I mean, mm-hmm. it felt. I didn't think we were getting back in it, and that and that is tough. It was a it was a gloomy day. It was cold. You know, the rain shut off, but. The pregame stuff was all rained out. It was raining all morning. And I, you know, I think there's a lot of people there that want to see a game. And, you know, at halftime, if you're down like like they were, you people are heading for the exits, like you said, like you alluded to. So, you know, a little faster start would be nice, you know, but but they're still putting 40 points on the board. And it's exciting to watch. They just can't stop anybody. You know, as good as the offense is, is is doing, why do you think it does take like a half to get the engine warmed up? You know, if you will, it's just it doesn't like once they get it going, it's like, you know, it's second to none, especially in the conference. But yeah, for one reason or another, it just it seems to take, you know, a solid quarter, quarter and a half to to really get it going. Do you have any idea what why that might be? Yeah. So uh, you know, the offense is ninth overall in yards per game and uh, top 20 in scoring. And I, I think really that it, it probably speaks to great halftime adjustments. I mean, they must be making – they must be seeing things in game and, and adjusting. Um, I mean, that's the only thing I can think of of why they would be having so much second-half success and not first-half success. Now, could you do more film study and try to have a little more first – have success i would hope so but um but at least they're making in-game adjustments and they seem to be working well um defensively i don't i don't know what we're doing so yeah okay ryan anything else we need to to talk on before we jump off here uh what do we have utsa coming in town this week yeah um i guess you know i think that hopefully we can get people out and and uh try to finish the the season strong I just feel like we're right there and, and we just need to turn that corner. You know, when against UTSA, I, I feel like we do wonders momentum wise and just, you know, closing out the season, really give hopes for a bowl game. And if Morris was 
could make a bowl game his first year, especially considering he lost. They lost against FIU to turn it around and make a bowl game the same year. That that's quite the the accomplishment. I feel like. And I had a, an opportunity to talk with Frank Harris a little bit at, at media day. Couldn't be a nicer person. Just really, it's obviously he's an opposing team as far as our fanship goes, a rival. Um, and I'm not at all rooting it, rooting for this, but realistically speaking, he is not a hundred percent. He's not there. So if something did, did happen to him during the game, that, that changes the the complete complexity of their, of their offense. So, I mean, I think there's, there's some ways, you know, if the ball bounces, you know, a certain way and not just on a Frank Harris injury, but like, it's just, I don't know, you know, there's the, hopefully they can you, dig down. You got to figure out how to stop people if you're going to win yeah. a game and they haven't done it yet. So I, I can't, I can't give them, I gave them a benefit of doubt this week. You did. They almost won it. And now until they learn how to stop somebody, I'm going to struggle to give them the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it doesn't matter how many points put up if we can't stop anybody. Mm-hmm. They'll just put up one more. <laughs> yeah, they they will, you know, forty seconds or fifty seconds, they'll get it done. <laughs> but okay, Ryan. Well, thank right. you so much, and as always, go mean green. Go mean green.